Hey everyone, it's Emily here from Eastward and I'm going to be talking you through today um, about multiplication and division using something called the CPA approach. So here are our five um, outcomes for the session or the kind of structure that we're going to follow. So I'll give you a minute to have a read of this. Okay, so the CPA model is essentially a, a teaching strategy that math, all children should use this when they are learning maths. Okay, and as educators, as teachers, we should be following this structure to uh, make our teaching of maths the most effective. So what does it stand for? Well, if you look at the green section over there, C stands for concrete, concrete resources. So basically just things that you can hold in your hand. They are sometimes referred to as manipulatives. The P of CPA stands for pictorial, pictorial, so pictures, and the A stands for abstract, so that means just purely numbers and symbols. Just before I go on to the middle section there, um, I think it's so worth saying at this point, this model applies throughout primary school, to be honest, it applies to everything, uh, to, applies to every age group. So it's not, I think sometimes there's a little bit of a, a misconception that having uh, physical resources out are for the EYFS and Key Stage 1. That is not true, okay? These should be used consistently throughout school. Um, yes, of course, they may be used less and less as the children get older, as their abstract understanding of maths is becoming uh, more solidified. But even in years five and six, new concepts are still being introduced where the use of a concrete resource for the first lesson or two, or you know, however long a particular child might need it, is really essential. Okay, looking down the middle, these are just a variety of different concrete resources that you will be used to seeing in school. So I'll just give you a minute just to run your eyes down that list. Okay, and like I said, you know, you will be used to using these. Um, if there are any that you are not particularly sure about or you, you are unsure of what they mean or how to use them effectively, hopefully this session will help you a little bit. But please never be afraid um, to ask a colleague, to ask the teacher to show you, oh, am I using this correctly? What's another way that I could use this? Um, okay, so vocabulary. Um, looking at the left, I've put that mathematical vocabulary is essential. Uh, so many of the questions that the children will encounter will have these words in that again as adults we sort of take for granted we forget the fact that one day we perhaps didn't understand these as well we have to teach these words to children if they are going to be able to access uh, their questions and their learning the second point is really important they are you are never too young to learn a complicated word in my opinion um, I had a really funny example once somebody told me you know if a five or six year old can know the word for Tyrannosaurus Rex, then of course they can understand the word product for multiplication. And, and I think it's so true. Don't be afraid if a word sounds complicated or maybe it's something that you're not 100% um, you know, familiar with that a child won't be able to pick it up. Of course they will. Um, and just be encouraging that there are lots of different words that mean the same thing. So I will let you have a quick look there at the different words for multiplication and the different words for division. Okay, and B, um, what I would say is, is mix up your use of these words. So, you know, if you're working with a group of children, again, no matter the age, and you are doing multiplication, then on a Monday, use multiplication. Yesterday, you know, on the Tuesday, maybe add in product. Oh, yesterday we said multiplication. Do you know there's another word that we might use? We could say product. And then over the week or over the course of weeks, you can be gradually adding to that vocabulary bank. Um, and it's only going to help the children with their learning. Okay, so I'm now going to take you through a mixture of examples of concrete and pictorial um, questions or strategies that you can use to support the children. I've done this generally, I've not done this uh, at this stage as, you know, key stage one, key stage two, because I do think that it's so important to have an aware awareness of these different approaches, no matter what the year group you're in. 
these are because it, this is obviously a presentation on a screen all of these are going to be pictures uh, but you will sometimes need to just use your imagination to imagine how this could be a, a physical resource in front of you. Okay here we have some Numicron showing different multiplications uh, at the top here you can see it is showing uh, five times four um, equally that is showing four lots of five and that is so important that you embed that it's called commutative law um, in multiplication that basically means it's the same either way. Um, children need to have a really solid understanding of that um, as early as possible really because it's it's a misconception that can carry through into upper key stage two. Okay, so again, just loads of other examples there. Uh, in this bottom one, we have 18 being divided by three. So little threes here of the Numicon um, creating 18 in total, and then the children can count how many groups they have. Here again, we are showing multiplication, but this time we have got some bar models. Um, at the top one here, we've got, you know, imagine this could maybe be uh, visually, they could have some counters, or it's a picture like you can see in front of you. Uh, they are showing five, lots of five is 25. On this one, we are showing how many groups of three uh, make 21, which would be seven. There's seven here, you could count them with the children. Uh, equally, again, like I just said, it works the other way around as well. This is almost the reverse of the same question. It's now using 21 at the top of the bar model and it's dividing it out. So it's saying if I'm dividing my 21 into seven equal parts, what am I going to get? And finally, we've got another different example at the bottom here um, showing um, a type of question where there will be scaling. So where a certain group of people, or in this case, boys and girls, have one amount and then someone has a different amount. And showing them using this bar modelling method uh, very visually can be quite useful. Okay, so the boys here have three, six, nine, twelve, fifteen. The girls have three. So we can see how many more times the boys have compared to the girls, for example. Okay, here we have some number, um, some multiplication questions again, but represented with number strings. Um, so five lots of three or three lots of five uh, is fifteen. So you've got the little groups of three here. Um, and again, this is the same, but the other way around. So now we've got the fives. And again here, we've got the groups of four to make 20. You will almost certainly know this, but on a on number string, the colours, the red and then the, the white, are groups of 10. So once there's a group of red, that's 10, and then a group of, that's why on this bottom one it's 20. You can see, you imagine the next group of beads and you sort of separate them out and then the children can see the two, the two tens. Okay, here again, multiplication using um, jump counting, skip counting, it's sometimes called. Um, so we're here counting in threes. Here we're counting in sixes. Yet again, it's that idea that the multiplications are the same either way you look at it. And here the opposite idea, we're taking the 18 and we're dividing it back into threes. So you can almost imagine with a child saying, you know, count back three, count back three more, and then counting how many jumps you did. Okay, here we have a number line and it is a more of a word problem, so a slightly more advanced problem. Uh, and it's saying that the red car travels three miles and the blue car travels four times further. So how far does the blue car travel? So it's quite similar to that boys and girls idea that we saw before. Um, and it's using the comparison. So two different ideas on the same number line uh, can be a really powerful way to show the children the difference. This is exactly the same underneath here. Um, but instead of having all of the markers on the number line, it just has the key parts here, so the 3 and the 12. Okay, here we are showing, so using Dean's, um, a multiplication. So the multiplication is 24 uh, groups of 3, 24 multiplied by 3. Now in a minute or later on in this video, I will talk you through the formal method um, as the children get more into that A, the abstract of the CPA. But again, here, if you can imagine having these deans in front of you, maybe you've got one of these grids printed out or laminated, um, you can see what they have done. So they have made their three groups of 24. So you've got the 20, the tens and the four. So we've got one, two, three of those groups. And then what they have done here is they've collected uh, 10 of these ones 
and they will have exchanged that for a 10 stick. And then if you see what you've ended up with is your two, four, six, and one, seven, so 70, and then your remaining two there. So a really, really powerful way of showing children actually what multiplication looks like. And the idea of exchanging for the tens is so, so crucial for when they later move on to doing it in a more abstract way, like you can see over here. Okay, very similar again, 34 times five, instead of using Deans this time, they have got place value counters, but you can see across each row here, we've got 34 and we're multiplying by five. So they've done it five times, laid it out. Um, so all they've done again, similarly as the last question, if you look at the tens column, they've grouped together 10 groups of 10. And with this arrow, you can see that they've exchanged that for 100. Uh, and then, Again, on the ones column, they have seen here that we have got two groups of 10. So they have swapped those then for tens. And then you get your answer, which is adding this 100 that you exchanged, these two tens that you've exchanged from the ones, and then everything that's left here. It looks a bit fiddly, I think, to see it as a visual, uh, but hopefully you can almost imagine doing it with the children. Step by step, they can see um, how the process works. OK, here we've got a division question, again, using a bar model. These come up more and more and more. Uh, so do you get familiar with them? We've got 20 at the top. We are dividing it out um, into five. And again, a same, exactly the same question here, just shown differently. We have got one, two, three, four, five circles and we have shared out 20 apples. Again, you could do this with the children, sharing them into the, the circles. You could do it outside with hula hoops, putting things, putting children even into the, into the groups, and then counting how many have we got in each group. Okay, some more division questions here. So we've got 68 divided by two. Uh, so they have drawn two circles, and they have taken, they've got their 68 that they've made originally from Dean's, and they've shared it out nicely into the two groups. Whenever you're doing this with children, make sure you're doing it, I always say, like you're playing cards. So you do sort of one for me, one for you. Otherwise, you'll end up there seeing them just <laughs> chucking a load into one and not doing it in order. This method of teaching division by sharing into circles, I found fantastic to lead on to bus stop method. This for me has been um, really, really important. OK, another really good example here, 48 divided by two. Um, They've just shared it out. And later, this kind of question will progress to having a couple left over. Oh, look, we've got some that don't fit in. What can we do? You know, and that will then lead on to the idea of having remainders later when they're getting a bit more abstract away from the pictures. OK, here we have 96 divided by 4. So it's telling us straight away that the answer is 24. But you could do this in a slightly different way. You could break this down uh, using what this is called a part whole model. Um, so they've got the top part at the, bottom, at the top, sorry, and then they've split it into um, the two different sums. So you could think of 96 divided by four as the same as 80 divided by four and 16 divided by four. A really, really good strategy and then adding the two together. So your answer there would be 20, your answer here is four, add them together is 24. This is a really good strategy for children that are pretty confident with their times tables and they would, you know, if you were able to break that number into manageable um, divisors for them, they would be able to work it out. So yeah, and it, it, to be honest, no matter how old they get, the, the, the idea of being able to think like this and thinking of those little shortcuts um, is really, really important. Hello, so thank you very much for watching the first part of Emily's video. Um, I will be uploading the second section that Emily's done later on in the week. As usual, please remember to complete the form and I've put my email address on here if you've got any questions. Looking forward to seeing you in the next session. Bye.